。越南制造，你看，印度尼西亚制造，又是越南制造，孟加拉制造，缅甸制造，又一个越南制造。The gentleman in the video is currently in the UK at the largest discount clothing shopping mall in the country. According to him, 99% of the items here were made in China 10 years ago, but now they have been replaced by products manufactured in Vietnam, India, Bangladesh, and other countries. Perhaps you, living in Western society, have also noticed this phenomenon. However, what you may not know is that even though the labels on the clothes you buy no longer say "made in China," they may still be manufactured by a Chinese-owned company. Ah, you 货，要么从东南亚给我，不然的话我不给你做生意。我们关税现在高得不得了，那咋办呢？那我们这些工厂小老板做外贸就组团去那些东南亚、越南啊，跟那个缅甸去开工厂了嘛。当时去的。We have reported multiple times before that companies like Foxconn, Samsung, and Nike, which used to manufacture products for Apple, have been relocating their factories from China to Vietnam, India, and other places. According to statistics, there are 31 Apple factories in Vietnam alone, and Samsung Electronics manufactures half of its smartphones there. Vietnam has become Nike's largest production base. At the same time as these foreign investments withdraw from China, Chinese suppliers are also following in the footsteps of these major factories and relocating their production capacity to Vietnam in order to avoid being squeezed out of the supply chain. According to reports, in 2021, 21 companies within Apple's supply chain set up factories in Vietnam, including seven Chinese companies. According to the statistics from the China-India Vietnam Electronics Mobile Phone Enterprise Association in 2022, Vietnam has approximately 150 electronic enterprise factories, with the majority of them coming from Taiwan and Hong Kong. But there are also domestic companies from mainland China, and these are just some of the larger-scale factories. There are many more smaller supporting enterprises that are not included in the statistics. For example, electronics giants TCL and BOE, as well as companies like Contemporary Amperex Technology, have also chosen to invest in Vietnam. According to Reuters' report on January 11, 2021, BOE, which became an Apple supply chain company that year, planned to invest $400 million to build two factories in northern Vietnam. They intend to lease up to 100 hectares of land. With 30 hectares reserved for BOE suppliers, in other words, the suppliers will also follow BOE and set up factories in Vietnam. It is expected that this construction project will be completed before 2025. In recent years, TCL has also built new factories in Vietnam to expand its production capacity for color televisions. In addition to selling in Vietnam, its TV products are also exported to Southeast Asia and the European and American markets. The Apple supply chain has attracted more attention, with Chinese companies such as Luxshare Precision, Goertech, Lens Technology, Lingyi iTech, and BYD Optics also positioning themselves in Vietnam. Leading manufacturer Luxshare announced two investment plans in Vietnam in 2019, with a total investment of $246 million, and conducted capital increase in 2020, mainly producing Apple watches and AirPods. Goretech has carried out a project worth $306 million in Bakning, Vietnam. Before many electronic manufacturing companies shifted to Vietnam, numerous textile and clothing enterprises had already established their presence there. Chinese textile industry leaders like Simir Group, Best Pacific, and Shenzhou International invested in factories in Vietnam as early as 2016. As of 2022, nearly a thousand Chinese textile and apparel companies have invested in factories in Vietnam, Cambodia, and other Southeast Asian countries. In addition, labor-intensive industries such as furniture and small appliances are gradually relocating to Vietnam. In March of this year, leading Chinese vacuum cleaner manufacturer Supor Group announced a $15 million investment in a factory in Vietnam. With plans to increase the production capacity of vacuum cleaners from the originally set 1 million units to 1.2 or 1.5 million units by 2023. Furthermore, not only traditional manufacturing industries are moving to Vietnam, but even emerging manufacturing industry leaders like BYD, China's largest electric vehicle manufacturer, are also preparing to expand into Vietnam. Recently, BYD's founder Wang Chuanfu. 
had a rare meeting with Vietnamese Deputy Prime Minister Tran Hong Ha in Hanoi, discussing the group's new investment activities in Vietnam. There are indications that BYD will start car production in Vietnam. Currently, the industries being transferred from China to Vietnam include footwear manufacturing, pet food, electronic manufacturing, household appliances, new energy vehicles, industrial machinery, and more. The transfer of a large number of industrial supply chains from China to Vietnam seems to be an unstoppable trend. Some industry insiders who frequently travel between China and Vietnam even pointed out that Vietnam's recent development speed is surpassing that of China in its early years. As more and more manufacturers transfer their production capacity to Vietnam, anxiety has grown among Chinese manufacturing companies. Will Vietnam replace China as the next world's factory? In fact, the withdrawal of these Chinese and foreign-funded enterprises has already caused traditional foreign trade companies in China to feel the pain of losing orders. Numerous clothing factories, hat factories, and electronic factories have closed down, leading to a large-scale wave of unemployment in the traditional manufacturing hubs of the Yangtze River Delta and the Pearl River Delta regions. Looking at Vietnam, it has transformed from its previous backward image to become a rising star in the global supply chain. With its implementation of open policies, tariff exemptions, and 16 free trade agreements, in addition to the advantage of cheap labor, Vietnam has emerged as one of the top 20 global trading nations and the fastest growing economy in Southeast Asia. In 2022, this country was a land area of approximately 330,000 square kilometers and a population of less than 100 million, attracted $27.7 billion in foreign direct investment, a 13.5% increase compared to the previous year, reaching the highest level since 2018. Data released by the General Statistics Office of Vietnam shows that Vietnam's GDP reached $409 billion in 2022, with a per capita GDP of approximately $4,110. The annual economic growth rate was 8.02%, the largest increase in 12 years. According to our analysis, the investment of foreign and Chinese companies in Vietnam can be divided into three stages. The first stage is the growth and initial stage, which mainly refers to the period from 1986 to 2006. In 1986, Vietnam initiated its renovation and opening policy, similar to China's reform and opening up. The core of this policy consisted of two aspects, privatization reforms and market opening. Vietnam passed flexible foreign investment laws, providing a favorable investment environment for foreign capital. In the 1990s, Nike and Adidas started producing sports shoes and apparel in Vietnam. In 1998, Vietnam joined the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, or APEC, which played a significant role in attracting investment and promoting economic development. The second stage is the mature and stable stage, covering the period from 2007 to 2018. In 2007, Vietnam officially joined the WTO, further opening its doors to foreign trade. In the same year, the investment law and enterprise law were enacted, providing a more stable investment environment for countries worldwide. Vietnam's policy advantages and cheap labor became the two main drivers attracting foreign investment. During this period, as labor costs in China continued to rise and the market became saturated, some large enterprises started seeking market opportunities in Vietnam particularly labor-intensive industries such as electronics, textiles, and footwear, as well as infrastructure sectors like power plants, water plants, and construction. Some multinational companies adopted the China Plus One strategy, maintaining their operations in China while diversifying their businesses and utilizing Vietnam as a supplementary component in their supply chains. This approach allowed them to respond quickly and meet production plans. After the global financial crisis in 2008, manufacturing orders worldwide were affected. Due to its numerous ports, convenient transportation, and low labor and land costs, Vietnam became an attractive destination for manufacturing capital. For example, Samsung invested $670 million in building its first mobile phone manufacturing plant in Vietnam. Increasingly, products labeled Made in Vietnam had been flowing into global markets. 
Nike, for instance, started relocating its factories from China in 2008 as part of its plan. Subsequently, Ho Chi Minh City became the location of Nike's largest factory in Southeast Asia. Vietnamese production not only supplies Nike footwear products in the Chinese market, but also accounts for nearly 83% of Nike's footwear share in the North American market. According to Nike's financial reports, almost 50% of its footwear products and one third of its apparel products were produced in Vietnam from 2019 to 2020. Ho Chi Minh City is the city that attracts the highest amount of foreign direct investment in Vietnam. With its well developed infrastructure and large population, it is a significant commercial and economic center in the country. The southern region, with its low labor costs, affordable rents, and convenient transportation, has also attracted numerous investors, with the Mekong Delta region being the second largest area for foreign direct investment. To attract Nike's contract factories to establish their presence in the city, Ho Chi Minh City has established several industrial parks dedicated to the textile and garment industry. These parks accommodate Nike's contract factories as well as upstream and downstream suppliers. And they provide various tax incentives. A series of practices aimed at attracting foreign investment in Vietnam have created an investment wave since 2008. Korean companies were actually one of the earliest groups to venture into the Vietnamese market, with over 4,000 Korean owned companies establishing factories or offices in Vietnam after 2008. Of course, there are also many European and American companies setting up factories in Vietnam as well. The transfer of supply chains to Vietnam also includes domestic Chinese enterprises, with labor intensive textile companies being particularly noteworthy. China's Tex Hong Textile Group began construction of the Hai He Industrial Park in Vietnam in 2014, creating a complete industry chain including raw materials, spinning, manufacturing, dyeing, Clothing production and branding. Best Pacific, a leading Chinese spinning company, currently has a total capacity of 1 million spindles in Vietnam, accounting for 60% of its total capacity. In 2022, Lu Thai Textile, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Lu Thai Group, invested in building a production base for fabric products such as weaving and knitting in the Vietnamese province of Songla. Shenzhou International, headquartered in Ningbo, China, Established a production base in Vietnam as early as 2013. Hua Hong Group has also established three production bases in Vietnam. These large Chinese clothing enterprises are contract manufacturers for some internationally renowned fashion brands. In 2009, Canadian sportswear brand Lululemon had 75% of its products manufactured in China, with only 8% in Southeast Asia. However, by 2020, The situation had completely reversed, with only 9% of contract manufacturing capacity remaining in China, ranking behind Vietnam, Cambodia, and Sri Lanka. Capacity in Southeast Asia and South Asia accounted for over 80%. The third stage is the rapid growth stage, which refers to the period from 2018 to the present. In 2018, the trade war between the US and China broke out. And on July 6 of that year, the US imposed an additional 25% tariff on $34 billion worth of Chinese goods imported into the US. The tariff scale was subsequently expanded. To avoid high tariffs, many supply chains that primarily targeted the US market accelerated their relocation out of China. Meanwhile, after 2019, several new international trade agreements took effect in Vietnam, leading to a drastic reduction in export tariffs. In January 2019, the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans Pacific Partnership officially took effect in Vietnam. At the end of 2019, the European Union and Vietnam were expected to officially sign the EU Vietnam Free Trade Agreement. According to the agreement, Vietnam's export tariffs would be significantly reduced, while the EU would eliminate tariffs on 99% of tariff lines. For export oriented manufacturing enterprises, even just the tariff reduction alone can bring substantial profits. However, there have been reports that some Chinese companies, in order to avoid tariffs, would ship almost completed products to certain bounded zones in Vietnam, where the final processes, such as labeling, will be completed before being exported to Europe and the United States. Therefore, the labels on the goods you see may indicate made in Vietnam. But they may have been produced in a Chinese owned factory in Vietnam.
那现在就是说啊，做这个东西对不对？百分之九十九在国内啊，这个钉子啊，拿到越南去钉一下啊。有些老板更加过分，对吧？东西都做好了，就这个洗水标啊，拿去越南钉一下啊，就变成越南制造了。所以说嘛，搞了一圈越南制造、印度尼西亚制造，都是我们老乡的小号啊。In addition to low tariffs, Vietnam's domestic tax incentives should not be underestimated. According to Vietnamese policies, companies that have invested three hundred million dollars or have an annual sales revenue of five hundred million dollars or provide more than three thousand employment opportunities can enjoy the four exemptions nine halves special incentive policy. This means that the company is exempt from taxes for the first four years, followed by a five percent tax rate for the next nine years. 10% for the subsequent two years, and then 20% starting from the 16th year. Furthermore, Vietnam offers tax exemption for exports. Import duties are also exempted for raw and auxiliary materials and some machinery and equipment used in the production and processing of export products. Unlike China, which faces difficulties in remitting funds abroad, Vietnam has no profit repatriation tax. In recent years, the COVID-19 pandemic and China's strict zero-COVID policies have disrupted normal production for many enterprises, leading to supply chain interruptions. The uncertainty of China's policies has also worsened the investment environment, further accelerating the relocation of these enterprises out of China. Clearly, with multiple incentives in place, there has been a significant increase in the enthusiasm for shifting industries from China to Vietnam. Particularly for companies that primarily export to the United States, according to Vietnam's export statistics, the United States was the largest export destination for Vietnam in the first quarter of this year, with exports totaling 13 billion dollars, a 26 percent increase compared to the previous year. In contrast, China's exports to Europe and the United States have rapidly declined. In the first quarter of this year, China's exports to the United States decreased by 17% year-on-year, and exports to the European Union decreased by 7.1% year-on-year. This is also one of the reasons why we see many major ports in China filled with empty shipping containers. Unfortunately, many former foreign trade companies and practitioners have suffered from a lack of orders, leading to closures. A large number of unemployed workers have had to return to their hometowns or become homeless, while some have chosen to seek employment in Vietnam.